Joining me now on the sofa here in the Tech TV studio is Sean Ratcliffe, uh, Head of Medical Writing at Pfizer, and Tarun Matha, CTO from Indigene. Thank you very much both for joining us. Um, we're going to talk about uh, a collaboration between your two companies, but Tarun, I want to come to you first of all. Uh, for anyone who isn't aware of what Indigene does, fill us in please. Sure. So Indigene is a company exclusively focused on the enterprise life science space. Our client base are pharma companies such as uh, Pfizer, and mm -hmm. we cover services including technology products, but as well as frameworks and other types of services across the entire spectrum. So we have everything from drug R&D all the way through commercial marketing side. We're about 2,500 people globally, and 40% of us have advanced degrees in life sciences or MDs. So we're very domain heavy companies. We try our best to merge the domain with technology to really drive outcomes for pharma specifically. Sure, and, and so Sean from, from Pfizer, uh, head, of, head of medical writing. T tell me what the challenge here is because you've opened a, a Pandora's box to a world of pain that, that your industry faces that I don't think I was quite aware of before. Yep. Absolutely, and one of the reasons I'm here and part of the reason behind the collaboration we have together, so my team in medical writing is responsible for authoring all of the documents throughout the life cycle in clinical development for new medicines. So my group writes protocols for running studies, clinical study reports at the end of those, all the disclosures that go in the, the public domain yeah. to tell patients about the results in our studies as well as our regulatory submission document. So the big dossiers that go to the government agencies to review, to approve our new medicines. And one of the big challenges there in documents and a lot of content is firstly making sure that we can do that in a way that speeds up and it accelerates the way that we can bring medicines to patients. Mm -hmm but also we do so with high quality. Yeah. So we don't want to be writing and introducing errors throughout and so the way, um, if we can do things that follow content through the relationship of documents, we're much more able to do that with higher quality at the end and really truly rein in and bring in do, um, drug development timelines quite substantially. So the challenge is the, is the volume, the process in terms of writing all of, all of this medical documentation prior to the release of a product. Uh, the opportunity then that working uh, with, with Tarun uh, and, and with Indigene uh, offers, how does that work? What, what, what is the technology angle on this that enables you to, that enables you to cut down the amount of time and, and effort required? Absolutely, and this is where this has been a, a, a great event and our collaboration is great because words words matter and how you write words and convey information and complex information is really critical. But there's also a lot of content in our documents and um, so being able to use technologies such as artificial intelligence, natural language processing really helps, helps us to be able to flow content across our documents faster and we can really reduce timelines by as much as 50% when we're able to deploy some of this technology um, to learn from document to document or bring content through from different documents using something known as a structured content model. So in a nutshell, leveraging AI-like technologies to speed up the authoring process of medical documentation. You're getting computers to write your documents for you, and I'm sure it's far, far, far more complex than that, but that's what it boils down to. It certainly boils down to working and using computers to do a lot of the compiling and the building of the documents and the oh. content building blocks, such that then when we use our authors who are um, heavily scientifically educated, they can focus on interpretation, analysis and conveying the message in the way that that needs to be conveyed. So, so definitely using that AI component in the building space really, really helps. So Tarun, talk me through some of the uh, technology challenges and, and opportunities here from the Indigene point of view uh, and what technologies you are leveraging. I mean, we've mentioned broadly about AI, but in order to help clients like Sean's. Yeah, so as a company, we're supremely interested in the unstructured to structured problem. Mm -hmm. And this was a great example of that, where these documents, they're written by subject matter experts, they're, they're written by humans. Yeah. And the challenge is that if you really want to map out that ecosystem of documents, we know that there's a lot of interdependencies between them. There's a lot of, uh, they all trace back to the same sources of truth. And so that we know there's a lot of information that's repeated throughout there. So how do we identify those opportunities to reuse content in a structured way and automate that? Technology-wise, what we found is that 
just approaching it with a rule-based system where I can read the text and match the text, that wasn't good enough. You had to look at content from a context perspective. Yeah. And so natural language processing has been a critical piece of the equation for us. We spend a lot of time looking at different NLP options because we're dealing with clinical language, clinical taxonomies, clinical ontologies. So we, we had to work with NLP systems and actually add custom classification layers around yeah. it in order to create that model. So, and we also had to look at verbatim and non-verbatim reuse. So there's verbatim, which sounds simple. Is this text the same as that, or is this part of the document the same as another document? That part was relatively straightforward, though there are some nuances there. But it's the non-verbatim piece, because since humans are writing it, yeah. they, they tend to take their own stylistic opportunities to rewrite content. But if, is the meaning the same? Is the intent the same? Is there an opportunity to convert a non-verbatim to a verbatim so I can automate that process? So NLP and machine vision also came into this. There's a lot of uh, these documents would have tables and charts and graphics. Of course. You need to process that, extract information from there. So for us, uh, especially at a conference like this, seeing what's the current state of the art in NLP and machine vision and how they can apply to document processing, that's been a key piece for us. Super. Um, Sean, before we go, I, I just want to understand a bit more about what you've made of the event here this week. Uh, obviously, you know, artificial intelligence, and I know you guys have been speaking here as well, but there are so many other technologies on the floor here. When you walk around, what do you see that you think would be able to be of benefit to you at Pfizer? Obviously, we've talked about one application of AI here, but, but what else is exciting you? Oh, absolutely, and there's there's a lot. There, there definitely is. We've spoken just about that one lens of content and mm. writing, but generally speaking, AI um, has great um, utility in being able to identify patients yeah. and participants for our studies, so be able to match patients to come into our studies. It helps us to be able to identify the best investigators for our studies, and again, all of this helps us to run our studies more efficiently yeah. and faster, so we can genuinely bring new medicines to patients faster. So I've, I've seen a lot of that here. I've also seen other areas such as augmented reality and virtual reality mm. that help bring you know, sort of physiological and biological processes to life, which really help us to explain science better to patients. So I found it very exciting. I've really enjoyed it, full of smiles, as you can see, and it's been great to sort of see collaborators and partners here as well. Good. Well, it's uh, been a, a pleasure to witness this collaboration on the sofa here. Thank you very much indeed for joining us and uh, wish you uh, every success for the rest of this week's show. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.